Well, hello. I'm glad you could join us today for the fourth episode of The Salem Painter. Right now what I'm doing is applying the liquid white. I will let the paint move freely across the canvas. On our last episode, we had a tutorial at the end that talked a little bit about why we use liquid white. And also on our Facebook, I posted a video from Bill Alexander, the creator of liquid white, to, to tell you a little bit about it and make you understand why we use this. If you don't want to use liquid white, that's okay, but you, will not, you won't be able to get some of the same effects we get. Now this uh, liquid white, we put it on the very thin coat. We don't want the canvas too wet, just enough that the paint will slide around. If we get it too wet, it, it creates a big mess and very quickly it becomes like mixing up mud. And that is not what we want. You know, after our last episode, I was talking to our producer here, and I said, you know, I have no idea what I'm going to do for this next painting. And during the last episode, I was talking about how I really like sci-fi stuff, and about how my grandmother used to buy me sci-fi books, and would watch sci-fi shows together all the time. And he, he came up with the idea that maybe I could do a sci-fi landscape. And that sounds fun. I I hadn't thought about what I was going to paint before I came in. And it's a really good idea. So first, I think I'm going to start with a little bit of brown and blue mixed together. Just bang that into our brush. Get a lot of it on there. I'm going to start it up here in the sky. You know, that doesn't seem dark enough to me, so... Uh, Maybe I'll get some black and Van Dyke brown. It's a very dark brown tinted color. That's that's more blue. There we go. A little piece of hair from my brush on the canvas, and if that ever happens, just wipe it off with the corner of the brush don't worry about it especially if you're first getting started it's, it's not going to mess up anything to just, just wipe it on off the canvas got another one on there I wonder if it's the same one it doesn't matter okay that's that's going to be the top first guy and I think for the other parts of the sky, Dur during our last uh, segment of the last show, we talked about mixing colors. So I, I want a very bright orange color, very, very strange looking orange, maybe a little bit more red in it. You, you got to think that the atmosphere on another planet would look different than ours. Of course. When the sun sets here on Earth, we, we can see some crazy colors. And, you know, maybe... Maybe another planet would have green in the sky. You wouldn't see that much on Earth, but might on another planet. band of green across there. Wash the brush. So I'm not going to be using any more of that green. And to wash the brush, I always say this every episode, we run it across the screen inside of our paint thinner, which is in a coffee can. And, uh, you, you know, actually, 
to show. I'm going to take that out of there. This is a little bit of a mess. Hold it over the trash can here. This is what that screen looks like. It's just a little grate. You, I bought this one online for, for $3, but you can always make your own. It's just, just a little piece of screen. Even the kind that makes a screen door, if you stretch it over a circle piece of wood and staple it down, that would work just fine. But uh, I, I prefer using this. It fits perfectly in the bottom of the coffee can. And I use a coffee can instead of a plastic container because the paint thinner will melt through a, through a, a plastic container and will leak all over the place. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and wash this brush off and get some more of that orange we're just working with. But before I do that, I still got a piece of hair on the canvas. Don't want that in the finished painting, that's for sure. Normally, uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this, but I'm just going to reach on there and scratch it off with my finger. Because I'm going to go back and blend all this out anyway. All right. Now that we got that done, I'm going to go back into some of the orange color. Maybe mix a little more yellow with it. that up with the green I put at the bottom just, just so it makes like a little band of color coming down through there okay I'm gonna take a clean brush and, and I'm gonna use it to blend I'm gonna do these light areas first and what this is doing is it's blending the colors together and removing some of these brush strokes Also removing the place where I rub my fingers all through the painting. There we go. Oh, we don't have bright orange in the sky, just a little band of it. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of the black and brown and go up into the corner with it. Just one corner. Maybe even a little bit more than that. I want it to be really dark up here. Maybe uh, maybe another planet's atmosphere would have different chemicals breaking up lights in different ways. I think I'm going to take a little streak of white across a bit. Step through there. And once again blending this out with the, the egg strokes we have been using. Wash my brush. And I want to continue blending but I'm going back down to the lighter part so I want to make sure my brush is completely dry and to do that we'll wash it like normal take a paper towel wipe it across it and already we've got an interesting sky going on here you know I've I've been to art museums and saw abstract art pieces and some of them look just like this. You know, if this was an abstract art piece, it would almost be finished. Okay, now down at the bottom, I'm just going to clean off my brush. I don't know if I'm going to have any water or anything down here right now, but uh, if we do, that'll, that'll show. And if, if we don't, it's just going to get covered up. So it's an excellent way to clean off your brush. Any, any painting you're going to do, unless you're going to put a, like, a, like you don't want to put white on top of this if you're making snow or something like that, but if you're just putting some dark land, just go ahead and get all the color off your brush down here. It's a great way to do it. 
And let's see, I got a couple of brush strokes in the sky still, so I want to get rid of that. You can do that by just going from the edge of the canvas back and forth. If you start in the middle like I was doing, as you can see, you're going to create more. So you just want to come from the edge and go like that. All right. Now next, I think I want to make some clouds. So I'm just going to take some white, pull it out. And when, when we were talking about mixing in our last episode, I forgot to mention that you can also make gray by mi mixing black and white together. So I'm just going to get some paint on my brush and then uh, I'm going to make some clouds here. They're very gray. Just keep moving around, moving the brush around. Maybe a little bit more. Just think about how a cloud might look while you're doing these. And now that I've got the cloud made, I want to blend out the bottom of it using a clean dry brush. And right now I've got all my brushes dirty from this guy, so. Go ahead and clean that off. Now we're just going to blend around the bottom of these. These aren't very bright. It's a very dimly lit atmosphere. And like I said, this is this is not on Earth, so we have no idea how, how it might look in space. Maybe, maybe this isn't a sunset. Maybe this is how it looks all the time. And once again, we'll clean off our brush. Set that to the side for a second. And I want to get more of this uh, gray color that we were using before. And I want more clouds. Maybe some that are a little bit brighter. Maybe I'll get it more to the white side. You know, that's a great thing about painting an alien landscape is if, if something doesn't look right, I can just claim it's because of the landscape, right? Okay, now that I've got that, I'm going to come back with that clean brush. We're going to blend out the bottom of this. Once again, stay, stay away from the edge of the cloud. We, we want that there. We just want to blend out the bottom. and blend out some of this and uh, I'm going to clean off my brush because once again I need a clean and dry brush for what I'm going to do next okay next I just want to come along just kind of lift up these clouds just fluff them up And just very lightly, very lightly come across. And as you can see, I've got some little brush strokes up in here. I can just blend them out, just a few hairs of the brush. All right, I think I'm going to go ahead and clean off this brush that I've got dirty here. Go ahead and... If something doesn't look right to you, just go blend it out till it does.
All right. Next, I'm going to take some blue, black, and brown, mix it all together. I'm just going to get a cut of that on my knife. Uh, the, the same person who was uh, asking me to do a color tutorial was also asking about how much paint we put on the knife, since you could never see that very well. So uh, if, if you can, go to my, uh, my palette shot here. Well, we'll just do it on this camera. Uh, if you can see right there, it's about maybe a quarter inch thick. I'm going to go up to the canvas and I feel like there would be mountains, kind of like on Earth on any planet because of geological ac activity. So I'm just going to go through and put in a mountain range here. And whenever you paint mountains, all you're worried about is the top edge. You're not worried about, about uh, what's underneath because it's going to take care of itself when we put the when we blend the colors out. Pull the brush down it. And you you really want to scrape this hard into the canvas because that'll make sure the the value stays in the canvas and also. You're not going to have to deal with wet paint while you're trying to highlight it. That's going to scrape it in there. There's a certain amount of color that's going to stay in the canvas no matter what you do, even if you tried to scrape everything off of here. And when you're pulling down, you want to try to follow the angles of this mountain, but it's not very important yet. This is just going to help you lay out what you got. It's not important until we start putting highlights on them. And then it becomes very important. Another thing this does is help you make your layout. You can decide how how these mountains are going to go just with these brush strokes. Decide which mountains in front, which ones in the back. You know, and the more I paint this, the less it looks alien. The more looks like something you might see on Earth. Maybe get some snow to put on these mountains. And I don't know what's on these mountains, but uh, maybe, it, maybe it'd be brighter here than it would be on Earth. We got pink highlights instead of white snow. Maybe there's copper in the atmosphere. I imagine the the same forces that that make things here on Earth be present on other planets too. So things might not be very different, but 
it's the little things. You know, when when I'm watching sci-fi, I'm, I don't really like the shows that make unbelievable things, which was why I was always more of a Star Trek fan. It's it's some some of the things that are on Star Trek we actually have already today. But, you know, if you take elements of things that already exist, it's going to be much more believable. Some of the, the best sci-fi writers, actually, uh, know a sci-fi writer named Brian Ranzoni, and he's, he's from Albany. I work with him at my job. I'm going to try to get him on here one day. He does leather working also so I'm going to try to get him on the show one day doing some of his leather working for us um he also writes sci-fi and I've seen him actually read entire books researching a subject that seems like it wouldn't be important for sci-fi but maybe a character in the book does it or you know there's some object in in the the book that uh that uses like for example metalworking He'll go go and research metalworking for for days just to just to include a small fact about it in his book. And that's dedication. I, I really appreciate that. When I read something, I haven't got a chance to read his book yet, but I'm going to do that soon. All right. Now that I've got that done, I'm gonna come back and do some highlights maybe some of this same color mixed with blue some more of a purple highlight maybe a little red in there and uh, another reason we're doing this today like this is uh, to go over again what we went over last episode mixing colors Okay, maybe this purple just drags down from this side. And this is a very light touch. I'm just holding the finger. I'm holding the knife with just one finger and a thumb. And if if you have trouble getting the paint to come off, just kind of wiggle it as you go down. And that'll also help help make it break and and make these little places and that look like rocks maybe here got... and you have the dark color underneath so you know you want to let that show through in some places we're not trying to completely co color in the mountain here we're just uh, trying to add some highlights You know, maybe if uh, if you have a little narrow place you need to to get to, you can just use this other little side of the knife. Highlight like that. You know, I definitely don't want you to try to copy my paintings, and I don't want to copy other people's. But the important part is that you learn this technique. Or at least that you enjoy watching it. Uh, already with the first few videos, I've, I've had people, a good friend of mine, Michael Clark, his daughter watches this video. Uh, I don't know her name. I don't remember, but uh, I'd like to say hello to her. According to him, he, she's one of my biggest fans, and and that makes me happy. I hope, I hope she'll, uh, when she gets old enough, she'll be interested in this, and you know, maybe she'll start painting now with the uh, with acrylic paints or uh, maybe tempera paints. It's never too early to get started. It's just like uh, when kids learn a language; they uh, they learn it fastest when they're youngest. And the same goes for anything else. If anything you can teach a child when they're young, they'll learn learn it many times faster than we'd be able to. And, you 
know, there's a lot of people who work with children and, and do some really amazing things, but uh, I don't really have the patience myself, so I leave it to them, and I just admire their work. I'm going to wipe off my palette knife, and it's time to get started here on the bottom. Okay, first what I'm going to do, I'm going to come along and just tap all this until, until it basically just turns into a mist. And the reason I'm holding the back of my uh, my easel here is because uh, it's not a very heavy easel. It's a cheap easel, and I really should upgrade if I'm going to continue doing these shows, which I am. I believe we're... Today we're actually filming three of them, and, and next week we're scheduled for another six or seven, so we got a lot of these coming. Okay. Now next, I'm, I'm going to come down here. I'm just going to scrape in some color. A very dark color it looks like kind of a gray that's part of the color I mixed up early for the mount earlier for the mountains and uh, you know I, I don't know what vegetation might look like on another planet if there is any but uh I don't imagine it would look the same as it would on Earth. So for now I'm just going to put some little indications of bushes and things like that back there. go in and I think maybe we'll we'll have something like water here but I don't I don't want it to be water so I'm gonna add something to this blue I think not sure what yet we'll figure that out in a second I do want to go ahead and get this blue in here As you can see, where I started putting on the blue, it's darker, but as I work it in, it mixes with the liquid white. If we just sat here in one spot and went back and forth, just repeatedly, like we're doing right here, this blue is going to get lighter and lighter and lighter the more it mixes with the liquid white underneath. But we don't want to blend it out completely. Just want to get that blue in there. Okay. I think maybe I'll mix some yellow in with this blue to give it a, a green tint. If you'll notice, we're doing a lot of color mixing this episode that we went over in the last episode. I'm hoping this helps people out and and helps them understand how colors blend together. I use yellow in just about every painting I do, whether I have anything yellow or not, because it's great for making highlights.
All right, now it's time to start thinking about some of the bushes that we got going on closer to us near the water. Okay, first I'm going to pick up some of the some of my dark color here. Just mix up a little black and dyke brown. Yeah, I have another little ridge of bushes coming along here. And maybe, maybe, uh, I do have something that looks like a tree. But if I'm painting an alien landscape, I have to ask myself, how would a tree on an alien planet look? Would it be different from trees on Earth? Yeah, I have another tree right here. I cover up those mountains we worked so hard to create. But that's okay. If you learn from making that mountain, then you didn't waste your time. Besides, you're gonna you're gonna see some some of this mountain through the tree, through the little places where shine where light shines through. Now this tree, maybe I want it reflecting in the water a little bit, so I'm just going to do a little rough outline of it down here, what would reflect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just nice if it's close. Maybe down here this tree is reflecting from here, so go ahead and put those reflections down. Okay, now that we got that down, you know, I'll clean off my brush so it's clean and dry. Go ahead and get a. It's very important that you use a clean and dry brush for what we're about to do. Now we're gonna just lightly, very lightly pull down that reflection just straight down you want to make sure these are straight or it'll look like your trees are just all over the place and then lightly come across all right now I think that alien trees might might look very purple. So I'm gonna make a nice purple color, maybe a little more blue in there. There, that's what I'm looking for, right there. So I'm just gonna get that in my brush and just we don't want to cover up all the dark areas of the tree. some highlights on there and maybe I'm gonna mix a little bit of that color with the yellow and the yellow ochre maybe the, the bushes highlight it with that color
you know, my girlfriend was always asking me to do a rainbow colored landscape for her. I think maybe she'll like this one. It's not exactly rainbow, but it's got some very bright colors in it. Okay. Since I got those trees reflecting into the water, um, I'm going to go back and get a little bit of that highlight color to put on the reflections. So first I want to go ahead and clean my brush again. Alright, and I'm going to go back into that color. I'm using the one inch brush. Just Just dab a little bit of it on. It's not very important because we're about to come back down and rub it in a little bit. Just very lightly come across. All right. Now, now that we are finished here, we're going to make a bank for our uh, what looks like maybe a methane lake, something like that. You know, we got a little bit of dark color under here, so we can let that break a little bit. It's going to show underneath. And go ahead and bring this bank out over our reflection some. Maybe, maybe the shore comes up a little more here. Now sometimes the supplies to, to do this sort of painting can be hard to find in some places. Uh, usually bigger towns have craft stores where you can get this. Here in Salem we're very lucky because we have several craft stores and there's an art shop downtown and I've been there a few times. I talked to the owner. He's a very nice guy. So uh, if you're ever downtown shopping, be sure to s stop in and check it out. Maybe buy some brushes or something while you're there. It's always fun to talk to. Okay, now that I've got this done, I'm going to make some of that purple color in my brown to make a highlight. And uh, as you can see, I'm leaving the paint marbled so it will break up along this and make a very, very interesting looking bank. You just do it the same way you did the mountain, just barely any pressure. You know, if you miss part of it, just come back and get it. It doesn't have to be perfect. on there. Alright, next I'm going to take a little bit of the liquid white and I'm going to take it out of the can and put it on the palette. Spread it out. Then I, I want to get a little cut of it. Come across with it. And then I'm just going to put a water line right into the water. Just want to come across like like you're trying to cut a hole into the canvas. It, but uh, 
you don't have to worry about this canvas. This canvas is strong. You're not you're not going to push through it. So don't worry about that. If if it's too bright, you don't want a bright water line. Well, maybe you can mix it in with a little brown to dull it down. I'm going to keep these basically straight, going in a straight line. And if you know, after you do it, if it looks too bright, just come across and, and rub it with your knife. It almost just disappear. And a little bit more rubbed it out too much. Don't want to do that. Okay, now that we got this done. Blend out our water a little more. Make, make sure we don't rub out all the reflections. We worked hard to make them. We don't want to get rid of them. Just, just blend them a little bit. And maybe again, I'll take some of that dark color and come out here. And make a little row of bushes. It's just always nice to have something in the foreground here that's interesting. Our painting would be very boring if we didn't put something up here. And I think maybe since we're up close we want we want a place where where the rocks show through here and and everywhere else in the painting the rocks have been kind of a purple blue lavender blend so just gonna make it where you can see some of that ground through there Maybe a little bit of sap green And that looks pretty terrible right now, but we're going to go through and just bring this into the painting with some, some highlights. Make it look like part of the bushes that were back there. little bushes and remember what I always say about bushes you just want to do one at a time because if you just come in and do a whole row it's going to look like a row it's not going to look like separate bushes and that's what you want a little, a little yellow bush here And if you'll notice, I'm just using the corner of the two inch brush. You could, you could use a one inch brush, use a fan brush. You can use whatever you want to to paint in these bushes. It's just this two inch brush helps me to paint fast. And we have a limited time here, so I have to get finished fast sometimes. And uh, I think. We'll get some more of this highlight color in our painting. I like the yellow. It really stands out against all the lavender and stuff we have already. Sometimes you see a color that, that looks really bright and it's not because the color itself is bright. It's because what's behind it is dark. And that is a uh, very important. All right, then I'm going to put that brush down. I'm going to get some more of the, the lavender color. Maybe come back a few highlights in the yellow. A 
Yeah, more on the lake bank there. Oh, and speaking of the lake, uh, when when you put in stones like this, you'll want to come come through, and in some places, just put in some little grassy areas or something like that to to make it seem like it's part of the painting, and you don't just have a big big stone face sitting out here in the middle of nowhere. All right, and we, we have some extra time left, about 10 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and take some of this paint thinner, put it out on the palette in the start color. Make a big mess with it. We'll mix it up until it almost, until it's about the consistency of ink. As I mentioned before, a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. So, I'm going to go ahead and just roll our uh, little liner brush in there. And maybe in here we want to put some little sticks and things, you know. If we have a thin paint, it's, it's, it's very easy to paint across this. Maybe run it through some red. The red looks really nice against there. And if you have problems getting the paint off this brush, it just means it's not thin enough and you need to thin it out some more. You know, I never sign my paintings on the front because I don't like to put my terrible signature over a landscape I've just made. I feel like I always mess it up that way because I have terrible handwriting and signatures. You know, we could just go go back and keep putting in little details and and working it to death. But one of the most important parts of paintings is knowing when to stop. Ah, uh, everything's important. I always say that a lot. But you know, one of the most important parts. It's it's all equally important. But what's most important is that you have fun doing it. That's what matters. I'm just going to get some last brush strokes out of here. And step step back and take a look at what I've got. And I think we'll call that a finished painting. I'm glad you could join us. Thanks, and we hope to see you next time.